What if I told you that I had the secret to ending your menstrual cramps, your hot flushes, your thyroid issues, and just other uh, health issues that you're dealing with? Hi everyone, my name is Rosemary and I'm your Afropean girl next door. In today's video, I'd like to share with you four herbs that I've been using for many years now that have been beneficial for, to my health, but also as a woman in particular. And the reason why I wanted to share this today is because this has been a very um, requested topic. I've done videos about bee steaming in the past and the herbs that I used. Uh, I talked a little bit in, in my post on Instagram about issues with fibroids um, and also wrote a blog article about five herbs that you could use for um, female reproductive health. And I thought I'll dive a little bit deeper into this video into four specific ones that I'm using that I think could be of great value to you as well. So I was introduced to herbal remedies or just plants in general um, about a couple of years ago and I got deeper into the knowledge and practice of it when I moved to Ghana between the time of two, between 2013 and 16. So as I said earlier, I have been suffering with fibroids. So I have fibroids, which are non-cancerous um, swelling, so uh, tumors, let's say, non-cancerous tumors. Um, and these can be found in your uterus, um, different spots, depending on where they're located and their size and how many you have. This can cause um, fertility issues. Luckily for me, I was able to... Um, I wouldn't say cure it altogether, but make sure that it doesn't grow further and that it doesn't multiply and it did not prevent me from having my kids. As you know, um, I have two kids and I'm, pr I'm currently pregnant with my third one. So to start off, I have my herb pots here. Um, and this one, yay, is one of my favorite ones. Um, I just put that in this myself and I just put a label so that I know which which one is which and this is red raspberry leaf. I will show you how it looks if I get to open it without spilling it all over the place. This is how it looks. I know when you look at it it looks like something else but believe me it is not what you think it is. It is red raspberry leaf. Um, and this plant is amazing because it's also called a woman's plant. And I, as if you've watched my previous videos, you'd know that, as I said, I'm pregnant and I have, you know, a pregnancy brain. So I always carry my notes here. And so I will tell you about one of the many benefits this herb has. And the red raspberry leaves is actually the leaves of the red raspberry. So raspberry, the fruit, just the leaves of that. And the reason why this is so, so good for women and, and just for your health in general is because it's very rich in vitamins and minerals and some of the vitamins are vitamin B, C, There's also, it's also very rich in zinc and iron, magnesium, I mean the list goes on and on but very very rich in vitamins and in um, minerals. It is also very rich in you know um, antioxidants so that's very very good because most you know we know that helps with dealing with aging and other um, um, health issues as well, skin issues. So antioxidants are really, really good. And uh, as I said, is it is often referred to as a women's herb. Um, and the reason why it's referred to as a women's herb is because it helps tone and tighten the muscles of the pelvic area. And this is very important for women not only during pregnancy, but also, um, as you know, when you have your menstruation, your uterus cramps, makes um, movements, and this is what causes you the pains of, you know, your menstrual pains. And so red raspberry leaf actually helps you to tone that muscle and tighten that muscle so that you have less of that contraction happening and you have, or when it happens, at least you, d you deal with it better. Um, and obviously during pregnancy, that helps to prepare you for labor because you will have to be doing a lot of that as you've been having, you'll be having contractions and with each contraction, your, you know, your uterus contracts and releases, contract and releases. And if you don't have a strong uterus, this can go on and on forever. And obviously it's needless to say, it's 
super painful. Um, this um, plant is also very good for um, people who suffer from uh, anemia. So, don't, you know, um, and have lack of iron, basically. So this is very rich in iron. So if you have any issues with anemia, this is something you would want to add to your um, general diet. Um, when I talked about how it can be used during pregnancy, you have to be careful because this can cause labor because it causes contractions. So you're not allowed to take it in your first trimester of pregnancy. Mostly it is um, um, advised to start taking it, let's say from second, or I would even say third trimester. They advise around week 32. I only start around week 32, between 32 and 35 is when I start drinking it. And I drink basically one cup per day and I start building it up towards the end. Um, this is not what I'm drinking, but I'm just drinking my herbal tea right now. And this basically helps to prepare you for labor because it is said to reduce, um, to shorten the labor. Um, everything I'm saying here there's been some research, but obviously sometimes it, you need more research to actually say that this is the norm for everyone. So needless to say that um, you'd have to test it out for yourself. This is not like a bulletproof proof thing. And if you're taking medication or you're under any prescribed drugs, you should definitely consult your, you know, your doctor first or, or anyone before you start taking this. And you should definitely do more research. Um, and you know get guidance before you take any of this so I'm just speaking out of experience I have been taking this herb and 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 this had definitely helped me I think definitely shorten the labor um, and it also prevents excessive bleeding after labor I could definitely say that that that's that was the case for me now is it all due to this or genetics or other things that I've been doing I'm not sure but what I know is that this definitely did not hurt and it only made it better. It also, as I said, makes your labor easier, but also shorter, but also actually uh, it's known to reduce the, um, the complications that you may have during labor. So as you know, now you probably understand why this is called a woman's herb and I absolutely love it. It just tastes like green tea. You could drink it in, in, in your tea. I have been drinking it in my as a tea. Um, um, you could also use it um, for your V's naming, but that's that you can see in my other video as well. So, on to the next one. Dandelion. You may or may not have heard from this herb, so let me show you also how it looks. You see, so this one looks First of all, it's a bit looser. It looks a little bit like Herbe de Provence for cooking, like 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 a mixture of thyme and all of these things. Um, all of these herbs actually don't have a lot of taste if you, you're drinking it or anything. They're not bitter or anything. Some have a bit more taste than others. But this is basically dandelion. And I also really, really love this uh, plant and I've been using it for years. So dandelion can be used from the plant, from the leaf to the root and the flower. Everything can be used here. The first one we talked about was the red raspberry leaf and we're talking really about just the leaves. So it's not raspberry tea, it's raspberry leaf, the greens. Here we're talking about the dandelion plant altogether. So it can be used from the roots to the flower to the leaves. Everything can be used and they all have specific benefits. So dandelion, the um, scientific name or the Latin name is Tara Saccum. Please correct me if I'm not pronouncing it right, but it's basically Tara Saccum. And this is also very rich in antioxidants, rich in beta carotene, which is, we all know, you can also find that in carrots, which is good for protecting against cellular damage, so for skin issues. Um, skin issues as well and just for your cells um, this is also very good to fight inflammations and we know that inflammation is basically how your body reacts to illness or injury so basically how it fights how it pr protects itself by it's a side effect I would say from injury or illnesses is inflammation and this is great to fight that 
It also is known to aid blood sugar reduction. So here the side note is that if you're taking medication for you know, lowering or you have low blood sugar, obviously um, you should check with your health um, practitioner before you start taking this as a supplement or anything. Um, this is also great to detoxify certain organs. So it has um, um, a cleansing and a detoxifying effect. So yeah, as I said, depending on what medication you're taking, let's say you have issues with uh, blood pressure or stuff like that, and you're taking prescribed medication for that, you definitely want to check with your health practitioner before you start taking this, or at least so they can advise you on the dosage to take. All of these things don't have side effects, side effects, and any um, some of them may have side effects, which is if you take too much of it, you might have diarrhea. Um, for some who have constipation, that wouldn't be a side effect, a negative side effect, but that's so with dandelion, you can eat it also. This is a this is actually considered a weed that grows in most people's gardens and on the streets. And as you can see on the picture that I just added, you've probably seen this many times and you're like, really, this is rubbish. And, and now you probably find out for the first time that this is actually gold. And so you can eat the leaves like you would eat in a salad or you can use it to make juices. You can use it to make a spinach stew or something like that. Um, and you can also use it in your V steaming, as you can still see in my other video. So that's for the second herb. The third one, the third plant is ladies mantle. Um, this one is an, one that I discovered only um, like about two or three years ago. This is how it looks. So also very loose. And this is... Um, I think this is just the leaves here, but you could also have the whole plant. Let me check my notes. So the um, Latin name for this plant is Alchemilia mollis. Alchemilla mollis. And this is the name, you can hear alchemy in it. It um, used to be called the magical plant because some of the alchemists from the past believed that the droplets from this plant could actually turn some metals into gold figure um, and this is also just like the red raspberry leaf also sometimes referred to as the woman's herb and the reason why it's referred to as a woman's herb it's because not only does it aid menstrual cramps and everything that has to do with um, you know menstrual phases and the pains that are um, linked to that like PMS and stuff like that. It is also very good for menopausal symptoms, so, such as hot flashes and night sweats. Um, this is also very good to reduce the blood flow. If you have a very, very heavy flow, this could definitely help. Uh, besides from women's issues, it's also great to treat bites or swelling or inflammation also in general and helps to deal with digestive issues. So anyone could be taking this. It's just that these plants have extra benefits for women. Obviously the red raspberry, I wouldn't see why a man would take that. However, the dandelion, that a man could be taking it as well because the benefits that it gives are not necessarily just for women. Um, so these are the three that I have currently in the house. Another one I wanted to share with you, which I don't have currently, is the mother wort. And I talked about it, I think, in my other video as well with the uh, bee steaming. And Mother Word's name, Latin name, is Leonurus cardiaca. We hear cardiaca, which is heart. Um, and this is really good. It used to be um, used in the past by the Greeks as um, something to relieve um, anxiety during labor, during childbirth. And so this is known to, and sometimes also called the lion's tail, and this is known to um, help deal with heart disease and heart-related um, issues, um, um, also irregular menstruation, um, and just reduces the irregular and rapid um, pace of a heart. Sorry, I'm really out of breath. It's a pregnancy. <laughs> and mostly, um, so the, the irregular heartbeats caused by stress or anxiety. And that's why it's you, it used to be used for women in, during childbirth because you can imagine that with the pain and the panic and everything, your, your heart rate goes up 
and you know um, to reduce that they used to give that to women but what I use it for is to actually reduce postpartum bleeding um, you may or may not know this but after delivery you will bleed for a couple of weeks um, and to reduce that this is some a herb that actually helps I've been using it as a V-sting to help that, but it also helps a lot with postpartum um, um, depression or just repression, uh, depression and anxiety in general. So this is used for that. It also decreases inflammation, which is again good for women or just people in general. Um, but currently, from most of the things that I've read, this is not a device to be used during pregnancy or whilst breastfeeding. Um, to be honest, I don't inject it when I'm pregnant or when I'm breastfeeding. However, I do use it as a V-sting after um, delivery, even when I'm breastfeeding, because it, it is for the obvious reasons that I just mentioned, such as the reduction of the, the blood flow and um, the um, decrease of um, um inflammation so here you go these are the four herbs that i think you definitely need in your household i will repeat them again so red raspberry leaf dandelion the whole plant ladies mantle and mother worth which are the four plants i advise every household to have and especially every woman to deal with all reproductive health issues and just health issues in general i hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave comments below if you've used any of these plans before, if you have any questions to ask. Uh, and yeah, I'm not a specialist. I'm just sharing what I have been doing, what is working for me. But feel free to ask me any questions if you want. I will also link here below the other videos that I did and the blog post that talks about other um, herbs and plants that you can use for female reproductive health. So I hope to see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.